So Tim Cook was excited for Fortnite Season 5 to drop and then realized his MacBook Pro couldn't run it very well. So today we got Fortnite Season 5 and updated MacBook Pros with a pretty good little bunch of updated goodies that I think are fairly exciting. But I also can understand why they didn't want to have an event about this, why this was just a simple website refresh, because in actuality, not a bunch of things changed, but still, changes that were overdue and welcome. Let's talk about them. So for all those people who love to complain about this, including myself, thankfully the upper end MacBook Pros, both 13 inch and 15 inch, now support 8th generation Intel CPUs, which include now having quad core CPUs for the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And with the 15 inch MacBook Pro, you can now get hexacore CPUs, which means that things are gonna be a lot, lot faster. Apple is claiming with the 15 inch MacBook Pro, you'll see a 70% increase in processing time and overall performance. And with the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it is twice as good, 100% increase in speed, which is really great to hear. They also now offer extremely more expensive options for the MacBook Pros, going up to four terabytes of internal SSD. That's the size of an iMac Pro with the same number of Thunderbolt 3 ports. So this is a very, very cool four pound laptops that's sporting a lot of equivalent processing power that you get with an iMac Pro. Intel i7 and i9 chips with turbo boost going up to 4.8 gigahertz. And finally, something people have been requesting since the 2016 MacBook Pro, you can now get 32 gigabytes of RAM with a MacBook if power users out there decided that 16 gigabytes was not enough. Now you can have that option. In fact, if I get the highest CPU possible with a 15 inch MacBook Pro with two terabytes of internal storage, as well as 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is very much close to my iMac Pro specifications, it's actually a little bit cheaper, which is mind boggling. The GPU might not be as good or the CPU may not do as well as an octa-core, but but either way, I'm really excited to see the Geekbench scores and the processing speeds of that upper tier 15 inch MacBook Pro compared to a fairly base model iMac Pro. These are, you know, desktops versus laptops, but processing wise, they're kind of overlapping a little bit, both in price and what they're capable of doing. And this was not just a spec bump as well. There are actual design updates. They're minimal, but they are there. And the first one is the first thing we've seen on a Mac before, True Tone displays. Both the 13 inch MacBook Pro and 15 inch MacBook Pro are now getting True Tone enabled on on the displays themselves, which previously we've only gotten on iPhones and iPads. It's so nice to finally see that being brought onto the MacBook line as well. And it even applies to the touch bar. For all the people out there that were looking at the touch bar and thinking, this is not color accurate enough. There's no raise in the amount of nits or the resolution of either display. You're not getting 4K on this and you're not getting 900 to 1000 nits. It's still the standard 500. I don't have a MacBook Pro anymore, but back when I did, I was fairly satisfied with the pixel density and the brightness. But if you were hoping for an upgrade there, looks like Apple doesn't see that as a priority right now. But if the 8th gen CPUs weren't enough for you, they're also including an Apple T2 chip that is replacing the previous T1 chip that they had that powered the touch bar. Now, it has the same T2 chip that you find in an iMac Pro, which allows these new MacBooks to support the Hello Siri option. I say Hello Siri because I don't want to set off your guys' devices. But this means that you could be running on your MacBook Pro. You could be on the other side of the room. As long as your MacBook is on, you can call out to it and say Hello Siri, and it will turn on and activate. The first time We've actually had that option on a Mac. It's been a long time coming. I was really hoping the iMac Pro would have it. I still don't know why it doesn't have it, but now we have that on our MacBooks as well. Another little nice snippet of surprise is that they're now including Bluetooth 5.0 in these professional grade laptops, which is a much faster, better wireless technology that surprisingly has not been in a lot of other laptops and desktops from the Apple line recently. And I really wish they would have. Bluetooth 5.0 has been available long before the iMac Pro was, yet it still has Bluetooth 4.2 which just means that airdropping files to your MacBook Pro, sending things to it via Bluetooth can be a lot faster than it was before. Now, this is the finicky one that a lot of people are unsure about. Apple is claiming that with these 2018 MacBook Pros, the keyboards have been slightly redesigned to be quieter. So now when you type on them, they won't be as loud or clacky as before, which I really need to test in person to actually have an opinion on it because they don't really have a video or a demo of this is how it's quieter than before. I'll have to try them myself. And the question still remains that a lot of people are asking, does this redesigned MacBook keyboard fix the 
sticky keys problem so many people were having with the last generation? Does this address that problem? Is this more debris resistant than before? Are we going to be running into the same sticky keys issue that we had with the previous MacBook design this time as well? Because it is still the butterfly mechanism of a keyboard. That hasn't changed, but they somehow made it quieter. So I don't know. We'll have to wait till people actually get these things and unbox them to find out if they have the same problem. Either way though, keep in mind, if you have a MacBook Pro and there are sticky keys, you can take them to any Apple retailer and they will fix them for free. They're also now including AMD's Radeon Pro graphic cards with four gigabytes of video memory. So GPU performance is also getting a boost as well, but that pretty much sums it up in the number of changes we're actually seeing in the MacBook lineup. For the most part, they look the same. Prices haven't really changed. Just the MacBooks that were the same prices as the ones that are listed now have better specs. And of course, with the higher storage configurations, higher RAM configurations, MacBooks now can be like $7,000, which is insane. But I know people out there who are probably going to get that model. The more depressing part of this refresh is that it only really applied to these two MacBook Pros. They didn't put 8th gen CPUs in the new iMacs. And to the people out there that are saying, well, they couldn't put new CPUs in the iMacs because then they would be competing with the iMac Pro. Just update the iMac Pros as well. Just update the whole lineup. They didn't do anything with the MacBook Air or the 12 inch MacBook. They did discontinue the 2015 MacBook Pro in case you were wondering. Yes, actually, Apple was still selling a MacBook with traditional USB ports, SD card slot, MagSafe. They were still selling that. It was just not on the front page of their site. Now they are no longer selling that. It's officially out of the store. And they did not update anything in regards to the function keys version of the MacBook Pro or the cheaper end 13 inch MacBook Pros. Those still have seventh generation CPUs and are still priced the same that they were a week ago. I think it would have at least made sense to lower the price of these things. If you're not going to update the CPUs in them, don't charge the same amount or at least just update the processors in them. I would have liked to see Apple provide an option for people who clearly aren't fans of the touch bar. There's plenty of people out there who don't want a touch bar who just think that's unnecessary. They don't want to pay extra for that. So if Apple was able to sell MacBooks that just had 15 inch displays, no touch bar, just the function keys, but with the eighth generation CPUs and the new RAM and the new graphics cards, I think a lot more people would be interested, especially if that helped keep the prices lower. So that's what I would have liked to see, but we can't win it all. The eyesight cameras on these things have still not been changed. They're still the pretty low quality webcams. I would have liked to see that updated as well. But overall, I think these are changes people like. They just wish were here earlier. Apple was very late to the game with this. Maybe Apple saw Dave Lee's video and said, oh crap, we better release these fast. Dave Lee wants an update. So there they are. What do you guys think of the new redesigned MacBook Pros? What are you most looking forward to? Are you planning on getting one? Because luckily now, I think there is a MacBook I can tell you guys, yes, go ahead. Now is a good time to order any of the MacBook Pros that got the eighth generation CPUs. I don't think you should have to wait till October, November for those updates. I think this is the refresh Apple's going to be shipping for the next foreseeable future. All that good stuff, let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.